So in this lesson, we're going to go into an architectural discussion of AngularJS at a very high level because we're still at a beginner stage. AngularJS, when it was originally written, would have been classified as a model view controller design pattern where the model updates the view, the user consumes the view, the user will interact with the controller to manipulate the model, and the cycle keeps going. And this is a very robust traditional design pattern. More recently, there are two derivatives of this which Angular could fall into, which is the model view presenter and the model view view model. We don't have to go really deep into the discussion, but the model view presenter essentially completely decouples the view from the model. They won't know anything about each other. And then the view model is very similar. The difference is that in the view model, you are doing more to fit the model into the view. The model view presenter is doing a lot less from moving data out of the model into the view. And we don't really have to worry about these differences, but it's something to keep in mind because this is going to become important because now what we're going to talk about is one of the most important components of AngularJS, which is the scope. Scope is a weird thing when you're getting into AngularJS for the first time. Right off the bat, one of the first things that is confused with scope is that dollar scope injected here is not the model. It's a reference to the model, and it's a subtle but important difference. And so what's going to happen is in your controllers, which are being evaluated in a sense before rendering the view, you're going to set up all your data functions, what have you, on the scope, and then the scope is going to be consumed in the view. So here you're going to set data, you're going to set functions, you're going to attach it to scope, and so the view gets the scope inherently and will consume that. So let's take a look at the view controller. This controller is very simple. We're not going to worry about the specifics. Let's just focus in on scope and what we know about JavaScript already. Here we have scope injected, and we're going to consume it just like we would any other JavaScript object. In dot contact, we're going to attach some object that this is returning. Again, we don't have to worry about what it is. All we know that it's returning a contact object or attaching it to scope.contact. And so once this is all evaluated in the view, so this uses view controller and this is view.html. In here, we're going to be consuming scope.contact. Well, if you look here, you're not going to see scope.contact anywhere. And that's because all the models which you're using here are assumed to be have the scope preceding them. So any methods right here, contact, this is actually being consumed as $scope.contact. It's assumed to be the same thing. If you were to see a method here, it would be the exact same way. If you were to attach some function, it would be just called implicitly without referencing $scope.contact. In this, we've set up the model view and then whatever is the third component here. The scope is what's attaching them. Because as I said before, $scope is referencing the model. Here, we're putting data into the model behind the scope, and we are then consuming that in the view. So in view.html, the contact object, which we're referencing here, we're using it in this directive. We don't have to worry about what it is. And we're using the email attribute, just like we would in regular JavaScript, and we're using the phone attribute, the email attribute. All of this is being taken from the model, but it's being referenced from dollar scope and used in that way in the view. So the view is not talking directly to the model. The scope is the intermediate step. And so however you'd like to classify it, model view presenter, model view view model, it doesn't really matter, but this is an essential thing to understand in the way that AngularJS is handling data when it comes to views, because you're going to spend a lot of time in these, and it's important to understand how exactly it's working. This has just been a high-level overview of what the architecture is of Angular and what the differences are in terms of interacting with the model, the view, and whatever you were to classify the third component as.